Hey there, everybody, how you doing? This is your buddy Alakai coming to you today talking about the PCS show 2024 PCS show. You know, one of the things about the shows that I really love to go and check out are the seminars. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to really record some of those seminars to bring it to you, my audience, just in case if you had a chance, if you didn't have a chance to get to the show, or maybe you were at the show and you had to make decisions about which seminar you wanted to go to and you had to miss one and, and all that, um, I wanted to bring it to you to make sure that you had a chance to kind of review and understand kind of what was going on there, if you wanted to, if you wanted to see it. So this is the um, one half to one day uh, sport fishing boat kind of seminar hosted by, to me, the legendary Steve Carson. I just think that that guy is is just so amazing. Um, and uh, in this video, they're gonna talk a lot about the different setups you need to go on a half a full day boat. But really, this applies to any kind of one, day, one and a half day boat, maybe even two days, um, just as far as the gear goes. Um, as far as a rod and reel setups and everything and then this is the first part and the second one that i'll bring you uh, another video will be coming out will be on the one to three day and in there in that video we'll talk about all the different setups as far as like jigs and stuff and we'll talk about mostly about bluefin and the catching bluefin in the day or catching bluefin at night and it's really really interesting how those guys break down um, the differences and the ways to which to catch these fish so if you are interested in that, be sure to look out for my next video coming out soon. But for now, hopefully you enjoyed the one half to one day fishing, uh, sport boat fishing seminar hosted by Steve Carson at the Daiwa stage from the 2024 Pacific Coast Sports Fishing Show. Take care, thanks all. How you feel about it, uh, etc. And then the number one question, some of you saw me questioning online was, um, you know, what should we ask these guys? The number one question was, and we're saving it for last, do I need my 100 pound rig or my overnight trip? Yes. So, uh, 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 uh. wait a minute, you're here, they're there. I agree. We're not, they're not I agree. even. They already agree with you. Tom, they're not even, they're not even. They're, yes. You catch my, a 300 pounder. My, opi my opinion doesn't even matter, it's only them. Okay, so we're going to start out with. Oh, we got a tent there. We're, we're in a tent, I keep forgetting. Uh, this is my 20, 25 pound rig. I, I, I put some lists out there. This is uh, rig number one on your list there. And um, back when there were albacore, this would have probably been my number one rig. In fact, I can remember certain summers that I like the entire summer. I never used anything but this. So I'm going to let you guys look at, look at that, talk about top shot lengths, hook sizes. Uh, oh, and I should also add that's a 10,015 star drag, and the rod is an 8 foot rod rated uh, 12 to 30. You always want to go for the middle of your line rating. Line ratings on rods are a little bit exaggerated. So, for instance, if you buy a rod that's a 20 to 50 rod, the, the truth is it's lousy with 20 and it's lousy with 50, even if it's a really good rod. So, you pay a lot of money for rods, make sure you're getting your best performance out of them. All right, guys, go. Yeah, so uh, like you were saying, this is a perfect uh, basic fly line rod. This is going to be perfect for, for just about anything we do uh, at the islands. Uh, yellowtail, calico bass, you can rockfish with it. Fly line uh, is, is, uh, is probably going to be perfect though. Um, I like these smaller reels. Uh, these pen, fa the pen fathoms are good. Uh, Trinidad 14s, uh, anything smaller for the fly lining. I just like a smaller reel, something lighter. Uh, when the spool's lighter, it's less uh, weight on the on the fit on the bait fish when it's uh, when it's swimming away. So there's a whole lot of things that factor into uh, what you're using for for fly lining. I honestly, I care more about the reel than I do the rod. Obviously, the rod's gonna come into come into play when you're when you're fighting the fish, but. If you don't have a good reel, you're not even going to get anywhere close to, to where you need to be with uh, when you hook when you hook a big fish. So uh, I definitely uh, make sure you have a, a good reel. These uh, these pen fathoms are good. Uh, two speeds always nice. Not necessary unless you're really fishing bluefin. But uh, as far as fly lining goes, I just I like the lower profile stuff, smaller reels stuff that's lighter uh like i said the spool weight does make a big difference especially when you're fly lining uh, there's all sorts of little tricks you want your bait as perfect as possible um so 
you know, the bait's gonna fly line a lot different on a, a reel like this versus uh, one of those big pen fathom 40s. So um, when you're fly lining, keep that into keep that into mind. What size the bait is, um, you know, what you're fishing for, and uh, you know, you know, that's pretty much that. Now on, so, on, my, on my personal rigs, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you before we hand off to him. I'm gonna have you touch base with with uh, top shot lengths. On my personal rigs, I may have anything literally from five feet to a hundred yards because I mean I already know what I want. But a lot of my stuff is loaners, and um, I would never loan anything to Robert. But other people might get <laughs> uh, other other people m might use my rods of very widely ranging experience levels. I've settled on twenty-five to fifty yards, not feet yards, for my loaner gear. Um, what's your What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Definitely want braid, three quarters of, of a spool of braid, and then uh, yeah, 25, 30 yards of top shot. I like having mono. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. I think you need, uh, obviously you do need fluoro, but if you just go with you know a small fluoro top shot, uh, a lot of times they see people, when they catch a fish, you obviously cut it, retie it. You tend to get lower and lower on that on that leader, and all of a sudden, you know, you're fishing a two foot leader, not getting any bites. Uh, I also like to say, at least having a little bit of mono. Uh, say you're, you know, it's hot and heavy, everyone's catching fish, and you don't know how to tie a leader on. You know, if you don't have, a, you know, just Spectra, you can tie a hook on just your mono and use that just fine. You know, you don't have to have the floral. So a lot of times, if you're just using a top shot of a floral to your Spectra then, uh, you know, sometimes being cheap, you know, you end up with like a two foot leader, a one foot leader. I, I don't think that gets bid very well. You know, you want five, six foot leader at least. Uh, so I think that that makes a big difference. But then there's also times, like if you're sea bass fishing uh, at the islands, you know, you, you kind of want straight braid to a small leader. So there's a fine line between uh, when to put a leader on and when not to put a leader on. All right, Christian? Talk about top shot length and anything else you want to comment on your light fly line rig. Yeah, so this is this reel, uh, about a 15 or salt is 35, torrent 14 or 16. I mean, for an overnight trip is probably like exactly what you're going to want for a fly line rig. You can catch, you know, 40, 50 pound yellowfin with it, yellow, sea bass. And uh, for me, I, Rusty's like, I guess, kind of old school sport boat guy. He's, he's, he loves his mono, but for me, I, I fish it like straight gray because you can adjust it to whatever fishery you're doing. Um, if I was fishing this uh, for, uh, you know, yellowfin, bluefin mix, uh, you know, fish like a 10 or 15 foot floral leader. Um, but if the operator, whatever boat you're on, decides you're fishing the island, you just adjust, you know, the, the, the size of a fluorocarbon leader and the length. So it's, uh, that's one advantage of fishing these with braid. And uh, yeah, I, if I was fishing the island, I'd fish like five or six feet of fluorocarbon, typically 25 pound. Uh, fishing sea bass, maybe 40, 40 pound uh, for a squid. You'll see that ring's got a fairly kelp. short piece of floor on it. That's because that's been used in so many demos and cut and retied. It's it, exactly what you said. It every time you retie, it shrinks a little bit more. Yeah, it's, a, it's perfect. I take this Clemente and catch yellowtail all day on it. It's perfect. So that is a is. fatal flaw sometimes. People end up, like you said, you cut your hook off, retie it, all of a sudden you go from a, a length of leader that's the size of the rod, which I like to do, and all of a sudden now this, this leader here is like, you know, two feet. I, I think the biggest mistake people make... Like I would Rusty, say that's too small. Yeah, like Rusty was saying, is they buy these super nice, you know, $800 Talicas and they try and fly line a bait with it and it's utterly worthless or like an avid like big avid or big accurate um you do want like these smaller uh reels with the light spool uh, you can cast better you can fly line baits better and uh you're gonna get bit way more often but i can't tell you how common it is people come in with these huge two speeds trying to fly line a bait and it just doesn't work they end up using the boat gear so leading you oh, okay right here no there's no sheep head on the overnight trip uh, what's more important, the leader diameter or the hook diameter? The size of the hook. To making a, a, a live bait swim better, 
do you want to go smaller on the fluorocarbon or do you want to go smaller on the hook? What's more important to make that big swim? Good uh, question. Uh, that's a very good question. I, I fish a size one mustad. Like I, I was fishing like number two and four super mooties when that like yellow fin, blue fin bait fishing was around. But a size one mustad, you could fish the islands with it. Like pretty much anything but sea bass, like tuna up to 50, 60 pounds. And uh, I would say the leader material is probably more important, but you see a guy put like a four rock gorilla hook in a sardine, like they're, you're just scratching your head wondering what they're doing. Cause you, they might get bit, but I guess the leader material. Yeah, you want, you know, the appropriate line. Yeah, I guess they're both important, but I would say leader or line size is going to have a bigger effect on the way the bait swims. All right, so I've been working over over here in the pen booth all morning and for the last two days. And a very common question is, at what point, and you, you guys have touched on it a little bit already, at what point, what size rig do you need, not emphasize, not want, do you need a two-speed reel? Now, in my opinion, that's at 30 pounds. Um, some younger, stronger guys say 40, a few even say 50. But again, without getting into a heavy rig, but still having a 30 pound rig, that is, is a very lively point of discussion. So again, everything from top shot length to hook size to whatever, that's your 30 pound rig, and that is the two speed. So go from there. Well, you know, the, the two speed's definitely a, a must have when you're tuna fishing, at least for the bigger ones. Uh, Anything over 40 or 50 pounds is, is definitely ideal for a two-speed. Just the, the reels that they have nowadays, like these pen fathoms and stuff, they're, they're low profile, they're lightweight, um, and you could, you could fish light line and uh, get away with it fly lining and catch nice fish with it. That's the cool thing about the, uh, the two-speeds nowadays, the, you know, Talica, same thing, they're all lightweight. Small reels that you could uh, fly line real well with and uh, uh, also still hold a lot of line and uh, be able to kind of drop your line class down and, uh, and, and catch some fish. So, uh, you know, if you're fishing 30 pound, if you're fishing 40 pound at any point, then you want a two speed, I would say. If there's 40 pound on your, on your rod, you definitely want a two speed. But same, same thing kind of goes for, you know, if you're light line fishing, I like a, a Talica 8, you know, for, for some small bluefin and a small, small circle hook and, 15 pound test or something, you know, it's all just kind of about reading the, uh, reading the room and, uh, seeing what's going on with the fishing and, you know, there's just, there's a whole lot that goes into play with, uh, you know, what size line you use. You got to kind of be Johnny on the spot and be able to switch it up. But yeah, this, is, this is a perfect 30, 30 pound rod right here, I would say. And, and by the way, again, getting back to what we talked about on line ratings on rods, high end, forget it, low end, forget it. So to fish 30 pound test, I've got a rod that's rated 15 to 40. So that 30 is pretty doggone right in the middle. It would really not be very good with 40, and it wouldn't be very good with 15. With 30, it's really nice. Yeah, for the two speeds, I mean, honestly, the gear is so good now, like guys catch 200 pounders on Trinks 500. So the two speed is really just an absolute luxury. Um, even for cod fishing, you just put it in low gear, set it on the reel, and go to sleep. Um, set it on the rail. But um, yeah, it's not necessarily the line that determines if I'm going to fish a two speed. It's more like the fish I'm targeting. Like sea bass, I don't really care to fish a two speed. Yellows, don't care to fish a two speed. Um, but like fishing like 50 to 80 pound bluefin is on like 30 or 40 pound. It just gives you such an advantage to get those little inches. Um, to get the fish in, but when you're on a single speed reel, the, the ratio is just so high, it's, it's hard to get a crank, but when you put it in low gear, you can really gain the inches, and I always tell my passengers, like, if you just, an inch at a time on a, on a two speed reel, it's going to kill that fish a lot faster, but uh, we were catching fish on single speed last year, like 60, 70 pound fish on 25 pound, which is like, not the ideal situation. It's totally doable, but if you do have that two speed and you're not, your ego is not too big. You just put it in low gear, and it, it really does make a huge difference. Specifically, tuna fishing, uh, not a 
not a huge fan of the two speeds uh, like sea bass or yellowtail fishing just because it's not necessary but the pen fathom is honestly I'm a Daiwa guy but it's it's a phenomenal reel for any size so all the real companies make a reel more or less this class yeah and a two speed or a one speed yeah and so if you're gonna get a two speed because you might sometimes go tuna fishing even if it wasn't all the time sometimes and a few people like Robert can have a rod for every single fish that ever swam but a lot of people like they got their gears got to do a lot of different things so if somebody went and bought a, a two-speed in that category put their 30 pound top shot on it not what's theoretically possible but in general what 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 maximum size tuna would you recommend that this type of a rig can handle uh, I mean, last year we caught fish up to 70, 80 pounds, fly line and sardines with a reel this size. Uh, in a perfect world, I probably wouldn't want to fish. That's on a sport pack, though. It is on, not on a sport boat, so it's on a, a smaller That's charter a boat. Deal. That is a big deal. The sheephead man has a good point in the front here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... He's, he's gonna live with that, the, with that moniker the rest of his life. That is probably a huge... That tastes fucking good. That's all I want. This is, in my opinion, like 50 pounds or less is probably ideal for this setup. All right, have that one back. Okay, now, when, when you sort of got the potpourri size tuna out there, there's like tuna and they're popping all over. They're biting pretty decent. And some of them are 20 pounds and some of them are 40 and some of them are 70. Um, you're in generally in my mind up oh, that tends to no, 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 wait in my mind your 40 pound rig and, and you those of you that are following along with that list this is rig number three on your list your 40 pound rig and start with you again um, is is kind of the workhorse when, when you just kind of don't know how big they're gonna be and they're not gonna be giant but they might be good size um, yeah, talk about talk about when, the wins, the wears, uh, and the when not tos with that. With that, with the uh, forty pound. Yeah. Well, honestly, uh, I guess with this reel, like, if I'm fishing this reel, you know, I'm fishing game fish, you know, yellowtail, tuna, stuff like that. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, again, uh, it just depends on really what you're fishing. Um, if I was using this rod right here, I wouldn't fish probably 40 pound on it. Uh, and I'd say you could be comfortable catching anywhere from a, you know, 25, 30 pound yellowtail on it to uh, like Chris said, even a 70, 80 pound bluefin. A lot of the reels they have nowadays, you could catch, you know, those bigger fish on them. Uh, it's not necessarily comfortable. That's why the two speeds are nice. Um, and uh, also too, for the, for the price, and I'm not saying it because he's the pen guy, but the pen fathoms, I think for the price, because we have them at Davies Locker for rental rods. We're at the Daiwa stage, by the way. It's the Daiwa stage. Uh, all right. Well, I'm saying that I, I honestly think that they are very durable. Uh, you know, I have the Trinidad's and Talicas myself, but it does seem like they're a little bit fragile. For the price here, I think you oh. can't really beat the, the, the pen. But I'm fine. I didn't even pay him to say that. He said it on his own. We got a, we got a question. All right. Oh, yes. To cast a conventional into a commerce, it's kind of hard to do. For you. But for spinning reels, it's so advantageous to have that. If you have just, you pay your three quarter day ticket or an overnight trip, you get one shot at it, and you gotta throw your popper or a super sign into that. What spinning reel can land a hundred pound tuna? Okay, I'm gonna go outside of these guys just for a minute on that, just because in the in the interest of time, um, all including Penn, there's several other fine companies in the building that sell really nice spinning reels. And the first answer to your question is, if you don't have three hundred dollars or more, don't even think about it. That's number one. Now that's number one. Number two, you want an all metal body, all metal rotor, okay? Don't let anybody tell you that their graphite is just as good as metal. It's not, it's lighter, but it's not as good. And make them take the spool off the reel. And, and again, every company has these. It's just a matter of what price point they have them. And get a spinning reel with a double drag. That is with a drag element on the top. 
drag element on the bottom. Um, these guys would be pretty indulgent. Um, I would say in, in pen, either get a slammer if it's like you're trying to buy the least expensive thing, and if you got a little bit more money, buy the authority. Would uh, you guys have anything to say on throwing spinning reels on 100 pound grade tuna? Yeah, I think you covered it pretty much. Just something that you know has enough line. I think with the spinning reel, you gotta make sure you have the drag, but just have enough line. And uh, I think it's important to have, like you said, the sheephead man's right. You want to definitely be able to uh, to cast. That's a huge thing. All right, we're gonna have one more thing, and I'm gonna. So while he's talking, you think about this before we switch to the jigs. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them my my stunt bait um, with a lot of hooks in it, and they're gonna describe their favorite ways to hook the bait for what circumstances. So, like, I'm just gonna give it to you now, and then let him keep talking. Yeah, so just one thing on this bout of 25 here, the two speed. Like, if you're new to fishing or on a tight budget, this is probably the most versatile setup on the face of the planet. You can fish yellows with this, you can catch fish up to 80, 100 pounds on this, no worries. Uh, you know, fill it with 65 pound, maybe 80 pound braid at the absolute most, but yeah, like a fat of 25 or a saltus 35, uh, two speed. You can you can do anything that an overnight boat or maybe not a day and a half boat, but you know anything under 80 pounds, under 100 pounds, to be able to catch with this thing. And it fly lines bait super well. Um, and uh, yeah, fat of 25, saltus 35, uh, two speeds are super legit, super versatile. All right, tell them tell them how, where, when, why to hook the bait. Well, there's definitely a lot, just depends on what kind of bait. So if I got a sardine, if I'm, you know, fishing the island, more often than not, if I'm, I guess, any game fish, yellowtail, tuna, something like that, um, I'll belly hook the bait, just like this, those bottom two fins right there. Uh, there are some scenarios where, where I want to cast, so I'll sideways through the nose hook it. Um, that's good, like I said, if you want to cast, if I'm fishing calico bass in the kelp and I got to cast it far, um, if, you know, for whatever reason, you know, you see fish boiling around and you just want to cast a good bait out, you, I just like no soaking it because you can really wing it out there. But uh, tuna fishing, I think it's really important to, uh, to belly hook it. You get a reaction bite. Um, I like the belly because they have the little fins. There's, uh, you know, you're not really getting any uh, internal organs. So when you hook it in the butt, a lot of times you see them bleed in. Uh, it, it's uh, damaging the fish. So I like the belly hook and just kind of barely as as little of uh, cartilage as you can get. You don't you don't want that hook going in any more than it needs to. Um, so just above the two bottom fins right there, and uh, I think that's the best way to, to hook a bait. You're going to get a, a good reaction. Uh, it's the, the the bait's going to shoot out, and uh, you're just going to have a, a a better swimming bait. Get a reaction bite out of it. Um, so I, I generally do that tuna fishing. But uh, like I said, if I'm bass fishing or if I'm fishing the island and there's like a ton of current, um, then I'll kind of no soak a bait, soak it out there. A lot of times if you no soak a bait, you know, you can get bit on the wind in. Uh, another reason I like belly hooking uh, is because you have to change your bait out every time. If you belly hook your bait, when you wind it in after the, after the initial soak, you're gonna wind the bait off. So I think that's good because you don't want to reuse your bait. So I think it puts you in a good habit of always changing your baits. Um, yeah, for me and, and probably most like operators, captains, whatever, I would say nine times out of 10, if you see them hook a bait, they're gonna belly hook it. They do swim faster and uh, yeah, you just get bit. I mean, bait selection and handling, like you do it a lot, you get really good at it. So like I'll literally bait like almost every bait on my charter boat and uh, it helps us be more successful because if you're new at handling sardines, you typically people will mutilate it and they'll like carry it to the rail and then drop it in the water. Um, so I always tell my guys, I like give them a whole speech. You want to have like Michael Phelps in the Olympics. You don't want Michael Phelps sitting on the couch doing what he's been known to do. You know, you want a real good swimmer and that's going to make a, uh, yeah, smoking weed. This is the sheephead guy knows about him, but uh, yeah, belly hook bait is my go-to nine times out of 10. And uh, like Rusty said, if the current's super strong, your bait's gonna get way away from the boat anyways. Um, I have noticed a nose hook bait can be more effective. Uh, and that's like island fishing for the most part, but um, yeah, belly hook bait's most people's go-to. 
All right, yeah, right here. What about if you're out with uh, live bait for rockfish? Oftentimes the boats will have anchovies or something. Where do you, how do you hook it? The, the question is, live bait for rockfish, how do you hook the bait? Um, so that's a, you can manhandle your, I, I don't really think rockfish care a whole lot. So you can, you're, you're gonna wanna nose hook it um, always or collar hook it if you have an anchovy. Um, those things are a pain in the butt, the anchovies to hook, but um, yeah, you're always gonna wanna nose hook it because if it's belly hooked when it's going down, they're just gonna rip off. Yeah, especially with the anchovies, I like going if I'm rock fishing from the bottom of the mouth through the top because uh, you just get a little bit more hook in them. Like Christian said, you don't really have to worry about uh, uh, if you no know hook it, an anchovy, you have just a little piece that you can get. You know, a lot of times the bait comes off, so I'll go through the bottom jaw up through the top on an anchovy, but only an anchovy. Um, and then also if I'm fly lining, like he was saying, I'll call or hook it, but. You want to stay away from, uh, if you're using a sinker, you want to stick with the nose. You don't want to put it anywhere but the nose if there's a sinker on it. Yeah, you know, small or large sinker, either way, nose hook. Okay, good. More, any more questions on how to hook the bait? We're running a little bit tight on time, but I think, I, I think we don't have anybody following directly after us. So if we squeak a little bit over, technically we're supposed to release them to go commit retail you know, in the building. But I think if we speak over a little bit on our time, nobody's gonna yell at us. If they do, we'll get out of the way. Okay, so, now, my favorite way to fish, probably these guys' favorite way to fish, yo-yo jig fishing. It's mostly a yellow tail technique. Um, I've got some bluefin jigs, if you guys wanna talk about them too. This is, you know, this type of a rig is not for your 200 pound bluefin. And of course, I've got a yellow tail jig tied on here. So I'm going to hand that to them, and I'm going to find just a random bluefin jig to let them talk about, and uh, let them talk about jig fishing on your overnight trip. I can uh, just kind of go over the the yo-yo thing real quick here. Uh, a lot of times with the yo-yo, you're going to be fishing deeper water, you know, 120 to 240 feet. Um, so. It really depends. Uh, this is when you're gonna want to check in with your crew members uh, on the boat that you're going out with. Uh, check on social media, uh, but they'll a lot of times tell you if they're biting the smaller jigs or they're biting the bigger jigs. A lot of times, if you're fishing deeper water, you know, and that's listening to the crew beforehand. If they're telling you they're fishing anywhere from like 150 to 250 feet of water, I would tend to go with a heavier jig, like a full size 6x. Um, and if uh, you know, fishing a little shallow water, or uh, it's not such a important thing to get down fast, then I'll use a smaller jig, uh, like the 6X Junior, you can do a uh, Taddy 4.0 or something like that, but uh, you know, for the most part, it's just uh, kind of knowing what, where you're at, and uh, you know, depth makes a big difference, you know, what kind of baits in the area makes a big difference. Also with the yo-yo, uh, I wouldn't do any less than 40 pound. I do 50 or 60 pound personally in a two-speed reel. Uh, so this uh, Pen Fathom, I like the Pen Fathom 40 is a good two-speed two reel for uh, for the yo-yos because uh, you got that high speed that you could uh, wind it, wind the, the jig in, and then uh, a low speed if you do hook a big fish, uh, just to kind of help get them out of the rocks there. Um, this uh, scrambled eggs a good color. Uh, you know when the red crab were around, those the red ones were working just. I, I like sticking to the classics, scrambled egg, blue and white, mint, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, just depends on whatever you're really into. Uh, another thing, too, with the yo-yo fishing, uh, it, it does make a big difference if you're ready to rock and roll when the time comes. So if you're fishing and, you know, you're sonar fishing and you're looking around, you might be driving around for a few hours, but it's important to be ready because you might only get one chance to have your jigs go through the fish. You might stop on a big school. It might be the only school of the day, and they might, they might be under the boat for, you know, five seconds to ten seconds. You might get one shot, so if you're not ready to, to rock and roll, you might miss your chance. So that's another thing to, to be ready to rock. All right, well, I, I handed Christian a couple of bluefin jigs. That's a yellowtail jig, of course, usually, but you know what? I've got plenty of bluefin on those, and really I've got a lot of yellowfin on those. But... Um, uh, also, you know, you get a lot of, we, we, we spend a lot of time talking about 200 pound bluefin. Some of us spend a lot of time catching them, but a lot, but you know what? A lot of us spend a lot of time talking about it, but you know what? The truth is, most of the time the bluefin are, especially on an overnight trip, 
most of the time are going to be in like that that 40 to 150 category and you don't necessarily need your giant gear we're coming to that but i'm gonna, I'm gonna let christian talk about a couple of different i don't know if you even need a lot i'll just let you hold let you hold the jigs and talk about the jigs you know what weights to use what colors to use daytime versus nighttime yeah, so we got two jigs here. Uh, one's like a, your kind of standard looking mega bait here. That's uh, seemed to be working pretty good for the San Diego guys, like the overnight boats, uh, early season, and they're fishing it on like 60 pound and a two speed reel. This one here is gonna be a more, the, the bigger crazy looking jigs are typically your nighttime stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, I used to think it was like imperative that it glows in the dark, but like all my torn up, um, like I typically use SK jigs, but you can literally, as we know now, use a torpedo sinker with a hook on it, glow in the dark? which Steve's Whoa. got. But um, yeah, it doesn't have to be glow in the dark or anything. And yeah, like I said, I'm an SK jig guy for the most part, but I get them for free, so that might have something to do with it. Um, that, that would have a lot to do with it. Yeah, but I think one of the most important things with this kind of fishing is like yo-yo iron fishing. Your depth's gonna be known when you hit the bottom. When you're bluefin fishing, uh, the biggest mistake people make is they don't mark their line like at depths. So you won't have a mark like one, two, three, four hundred feet. And it might take 10, 15 minutes to get that done on a sport boat. And you can just pull your arms apart. You know, I'm, my my arm length's like three feet, so I got to do a lot of pulls. But most guys are have a longer reach, so it's not as... Uh, but you have the time to do it on overnight trips, uh, marking your line. So that's going to be the, probably the biggest thing to keep you in the strike zone. Um, but yeah, sinkers, you can use at night, um, which is crazy that that works. But it turns out bluefin aren't that smart. And then, uh, yeah, you can get the fancy SK jigs and rip rollers and stuff. I see an iron rod. It's like the iron rod that you use for like rebar. Rebar. Yeah, rebar. you're not in construction, all right. <laughs> and ironically, on the iron, on, on the on the, I, and I have fished with people that use the, the rebar. I haven't actually used it, but I've seen it work. There's a guy cruising around in the he's in the building now with fully custom machine. You know who I'm talking about. Fully custom machined stainless pieces of essentially rebar, made for and you know if you have to ask how much they cost, can't afford them. Can't afford them. But um, the tr I think the the trick is, and you really hit on it with the marking of the line. It's depth control. If the fish are at 350 feet and you're at either 250 or 550, guess how much you're going to catch? I believe they, they they say it in some circles, bupkis. You're going to catch bupkis. But again, we're, we're running a little bit out of time, and I want to make sure that I hit on the big question. Now, in an ordinary year in the past, when we were younger, Robert, um, you never saw 100-pound fish, much less 150-pound fish, much less 200-pound fish in local waters. It just did not exist. They were not there. So a very popular rig these days uh, is called the Brawler Rig. In fact, I'm going to be up here with, Miss, with Mr. Brawler a little bit later. Um, the Brawler Rig, which is a great way to get your live bait down and have very specific depth control. Now, the captain says they're at 302 feet, or whatever it is he says. Um, you can be sure that you're putting your bait right in front of them. And I'm going to let you guys deconstruct that, talk about the Brawler Rig, and then what I'm going to do is um, we're not even going to we're not even going to show them how to hook the bait. We're just going to go past that. And I'm going to let you make sure that you tell them what booth you're in, what the name of your boat is, what the name of your landing is, and invite them all to come see you in your in your booth. But but tell them about the brawler rig. That's my 60, 80 pound rig, and why and when that wouldn't be heavy enough, and they would need their 100 pound rig that they just bought. So uh, yeah, the the brawler rigs, uh, the new the new and improved uh, sinker rig. Obviously, uh, it works a little bit more effective than the uh, original way. Obviously, the original way you had the the sinker rubber banded up top here. Um, also seen like inline torpedo sinkers before, but uh, this just helps. You don't get tangled down. Uh, you, don't, you don't get tangled when you're dropping uh, your bait down. You can get down a lot faster. Uh, a lot of times, if you have it reversed, so you're uh, rubber banded. The weight, you know, you got to really uh, 
be gentle when you're dropping your bait down. With this, you could just send it down. Say the fish are, you know, 300 feet or I'll look back so they can down. so they can see what it is, and then you go ahead and put a bait on. We weren't going to do that, but put a bait on so they can kind of visualize what they're what they're seeing. It's a trap shot. That's a stunt bait. You would not actually use that bait. A sheephead might bite it though. Yeah, now that Steve said it wouldn't work, I would try it. <laughs> Good point. So I like to nose hook. Obviously, anytime I got a sinker on, I'm going to nose hook my bait. Um, if you have it anywhere but the nose, a lot of times you're going to uh, rip the bait off as it's falling. But uh, with this, you can just drop your bait straight down. Um, and a lot of times, too, when you're fishing this rig, you know, you're really getting quick shots. You know, you might only have. Uh, five to ten second period where your bait could be in the zone and the fish swim off. So that's why this rig uh, is has become so big. You could really uh, get your bait down fast. Uh, you could put a heavier sinker on. Uh, but uh, also too with this, you want a, a smaller leader on the for the uh, for the sinker. A lot of times they'll bite the uh, the sinker off for you, so then you don't have that big old sinker on the other end of your line while you're fighting the fish. So that's another thing. A lot of people put like a you know, this might be a 60 to 80 pound top shot, and then uh, to the hook you might have 20 pound test, because when you do hook the fish, uh, it'll bite that off, and you won't have that big weight to uh, to mess with. All right, so when when do they need to make sure, I mean, they always need to have this on an overnight yeah. trip. Well, when now, do now they I, need that 100 pound rig they just bought? I mean, nowadays it seems like if you're going on an overnight boat, you might as well bring it, you know? I, the way the fishing's been the last couple of years has been a lot of nighttime fishing, um, and you just never know. So it, I would rather have it and not need it than uh, not have it and need it. So the way the fishing is, I would if I'm going on an overnight, I'd prepare for everything. If I'm doing a half day, you know, one two rods is all you need. But an overnight, especially when there's tuna around, you want to be prepared. So anything you want to add to that, and then I'm going to have you guys re-review anything, and then. Um... We'll take a few more questions, but we, we really are supposed to get out of here at 1.30, so give us a quick rundown on that. Oh uh, yeah, if you're bluefin fishing, tuna fishing, uh, it's good to always have one of these on standby, you know, sport boat fishing, long drifts and stuff like that. Um, and change your bait out every couple minutes. It might be in the right strike zone or whatever, the right depth, but uh, you still got to change your bait. I know you're not going to feel it swimming around, but give it a couple minutes, bring it in, and uh, just keep swapping your bait out. But I, I don't get a whole lot of sinker rig bites on my boat, but... Uh, more of a sport boat, slow plunker deal, uh, but uh, yeah, super effective. Always good to have a couple rig out, and uh, yeah, always bring a hundred pounder in nowadays. I mean, you, just you, bring it. I mean, even on sale, they pay quite a bit of money for it. So yeah, yeah. bring it. Yeah, and if you got it, I mean, wipe the dust off, bring it on board. Uh, on. This stuff is dusted. He just bought it today. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. Um, Try to get in as much as I can there. Obviously, there's a lot of wind and noise, and people are kind of making noise, but uh, you learned a lot. There's those five setups that Steve Carson goes through, and I think he breaks it down very well. Obviously, you can always, you don't have to get pen. He's a, he's a pen guy, but you know, it's always nice to get an idea about kind of what it is. You can go and find your equivalent from your favorite brands, whatever you want to do. I happen to also like pen. I also like Avid as well. If you have any questions regarding that please feel free to leave in the comments below let me know what you like which you dis disagree with maybe um because i love to discuss it i like to find out what's going on, going on with you guys and uh to learn more about it um if you have a chance like subscribe hopefully i uh hear you out there and i can do more of this kind of content and for all those who came up to me during the show and just said hey i watch your videos i can tell you i just i really really appreciate that and i thank you so much for it because it just uh it makes me do all of this really i get there's no money involved in this thing it's just really fun to go and meet the community and the public and just to chat and talk about some new stuff so take care everybody we'll talk to you soon see you in the next video bye